Hi, it's Simon from Adelaide Walker here. I'm going to do another of our videos this afternoon. Uh, today we're going to be making, uh, assembling an Ashford traditional. It's a single drive, not that that makes too much difference. Now, this we're doing this for a customer and the customer wants to finish it themselves. But my general advice is if you want to put a stain on it, then do that before you assemble it because life is just a bit easier that way. Um, and my top tip is, you can hopefully see there's a bit of a hole there. Uh, if you put a loop of string through that hole and any other bits, then you can just, when you put your, your uh, oil or whatever it is you're finishing on it, finishing, then hang that on your washing line and it just stops it sticking together. Um, I like Danish oil for, uh, for this sort of thing, but you could use wax or you could use varnish or you could paint it, I guess, as well. So there are a frightening number of steps in this, but I don't think this is too bad compared to, uh, compared to some of the other ones we've done. I think it's easier than a Kiwi. There are 21 steps for this one, and I'm going to talk about those as we go through. All right. OK, so this is step one. We are going to assemble the single leg of the wheel and the two side rails. Now, the side rails have a hole in the top but not in the bottom. So it's the top the hole that needs to be facing up. And you'll see there's this kind of, uh, what do you call that, depression into which the curved end of the leg fits. The leg has got Ashford on one side and two holes on the other side. You want the Ashford on the outside. So these are fastened together by means of these barrel bolts. There are two sizes of barrel bolts in this. Uh, there are two shorter ones, which are the ones that we want now, and there are two longer ones. So it's the two shorter barrel bolts. Um, the Ashford diagrams are quite good because they have a uh, real size, or actual size I should say, picture of the bolt so you can tell what size it is. So that's the one we want. So I think the best way to do these is to just slip the nut into the hole and then you might need to just change the angle of it somewhat so that when you put your bolt through the rail and into the top of the wheel it engages with the nut. It's fairly obvious whether it's done it or not. So I'm just going to tighten that up lightly with the Allen key. So just so it won't wobble. And then the same on the other side. So nut in first. Hole at the top. There we go. And I'm just tightening that up loosely. Alright, so that's that's pretty much step one. So you can see these are not fully tightened up yet. I'm just gonna now just Check the angle at the top. You can see that I've got quite a nice fit there between the side of the rail and the top of the leg. And once it's nicely lined up like that, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to attempt to tighten that up. Okay, we'll tighten all the bolts up again later on, but that'll do for now. And then you can, then you can see that's not quite right, that one. So I'm just going to loosen that one off. There we go, that's better. And tighten it up again. And that should now look fairly true. If it's not absolutely perfect, don't worry too much because we can sort that out later on. So that is step one and step two. Okay, so this is step three. What we're doing on step three is attaching conrod joint to the treadle rail. Um, this needs to be the right way round, and I think that's a bit confusing. Uh, so, if you look at 
this, I think that's a footman, so that's what I'm going to call it. The top of the footman has got a protruding, slightly protruding bearing on one side and it does not protrude on the other side. So the side that it protrudes is at the back of the wheel, which means that is at the back of the wheel because the conrod goes up and down behind the wheel, not in front of it. So it needs to be fitted together like that with that bearing facing the same way as the back of the wheel, as this angled rail. Okay. So I'm gonna go straight on to step five, which is where we attach this the wheel support to the leg and rails that we made in section one. So if yours comes like at this one, the crank is already in the wheel support, so I'm just gonna take that out. And I'm just gonna offer up the frame, the rails to the wheel support. You can see that they do not meet. And this is why we didn't tighten up those rails super tight first off. So I'm just gonna loosen them off a smidge. Each side, definitely not going to have to do this. There we are. So I've just loosened it off enough so that I can remove. Okay, so we're going to attach these with a long barrel bolt, which should be the only one you've got left at this point, which goes through this wheel support. Uh, and then into a bolt in there. So it's the same arrangement as before, same process as before. Need quite a bit of screwing in those bow bolts. I am not gonna tighten that one up very tightly at all. And I'm going to do the other one. Again, nothing's too tight. You can see the frame is very loose at the moment. And I've done that deliberately so that I can fit the, uh, the treadle into it. Okay. All right, so what we're gonna do now is attach our treadle rail to our still very wobbly frame. And I don't think the diagram is very helpful here. Um, so I think what you need to do is to lay it out like this with the angled rail at the back of the wheel. And then you need to have the back, the back wheel of the wheel support needs to be on the outside of the treadle, if that makes sense. So the treadle needs to be, this angle bit needs to be between the two wheel support legs. I hope that makes sense. And then you'll need to wobble it a bit but these two steel rails fit in to the holes at either end like that. Now once you've got it like that, with this, just to reiterate, this angled rail between the two legs, then you can tighten up the bolts a bit. So I'm gonna do that now. So I'm going to probably give these another tighten later, but I've done these much tighter than they were now. I would also suggest if you do this bit on a flat, don't do that, on a flat surface like a countertop, it'll just stop you ending up with things on a, an angle. If you do it on a soft surface or a big grass or something, I don't know, <laughs> where would you be wielding a spinning wheel? Yeah. Flat surface is better, is what I'm trying to say, not very articulately. Um, so, having tightened it up, 
I should now be able to pick it up and the, the treadle should not fall out the bottom. So let's give that a go. Yeah, that's what you want. If you pick it up and it falls out, you'll need to adjust it so that the two bottom legs are a bit closer together. But that looks pretty good so far. So it pivots up and down like that. Okay, and that is step five. Uh, and it's step six, in fact, as well. So I have done five and six there. All right. Okay, so step seven is just a little one, really, and it's kind of another just checkpoint. I'm going to put the crank back through the bearings and make sure that it lines up so it still does. If it isn't, if you can't get it through because they're not aligned, I think that's unlikely myself, but if you can't get it through, then you just need to loosen off and have another go. So having got those in, I'm then going to give, as instructed in the instructions, another quick turn on all those four bolts because everything is now nicely lined up and we're ready to put the wheel on. Okay. Right, so what we're going to do now, and this is step eight, is we're going to pop that crank out again. I'm going to put the whole assembly to one side and I'm going to check that the crank fits through the wheel. Uh, so it fits through from the back and the back is the bit with a big slot in the back of the hub. Um, it's not very clear what you should do if it doesn't fit. <laughs> Contact your Ashford dealer, I should think. But you can see that that fits kind of snugly so it doesn't fall through through there. So that's all fine. Um, what we're actually going to do at the next step, you can see, I hope, that there is a hole in the crank. And I'm getting a nod of the head. And that hole needs to be lined up with that slot so that that pin goes down the slot and through the hole. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. So, they, Ashford suggests at this point that you slap a bit of wax on the crank. So I shall do that. make it slide a bit easier. So you don't want it slathered in it, just a little bit on there. Yeah, right, so I'm going to bring this back in. And I'm going to get the wheel in position first. So the same thing again. The slot at the back of the wheel hub needs to be at the back of the wheel. It needs to be uh, above the point where the angled rail is. So that just sits in there like that. Okay, this is our third attempt at filming this because what I've discovered is it's quite difficult to do this when you're on this side, the front of the wheel um, but you wouldn't normally do that unless you're trying to film yourself so I have come round on this side so we've got the wheel held roughly in place I am going to now insert the crank through the frame through the wheel and into the back end of the frame do not worry at this point about trying to line anything up because it's awkward enough as it is so you just need to just wiggle that crank there there we go that is miles easier when you can actually see what you're doing and I can feel that I'm through the wheel, but I'm not in the back bearing yet. Or am I? There we go, that's it. I am in the back bearing now. Yeah. So the wheel is now on. And spins rather nicely. Good. Right, so this is step nine. And what we're going to do now is line the crank in the slot in the wheel correctly up. So this is the bit we didn't worry about. Uh, what you need here is a lazy cake wire, a lazy cake wire, and I'm just gonna drop that lazy cake wire just into that slot in the back of the wheel. And at the moment, 
it won't go any further because it is not aligned with the hole in the hub. So I'm now going to just twist it round until the crank is in line with that slot and if you're very lucky you'll be able to slip the wheel slip it straight through the hole if you're not quite as lucky you'll just need to wiggle the crank a bit there we go until the hole in the crank is aligned and then in this case the lazy cake wire is gone right through the crank and those two are now connected that was quite a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. All right, uh, if you ever tried to do this on an older version, uh, the hole is right in the centre of the hub and that is considerably fiddlier, if fiddlier is a word. So this is um, these ones where their slot and the pin goes through the back of the hub are miles easier. All right, so having done that, I'm just going to take the, the lazy cable right out, not moving the wheel, and I'm going to slip that little hub pin down the slot and that's now got to go through the crank it is a tight fit through the crank and you will not unless you're some sort of superhuman person be able to push it through with a hand so you need a hammer it is a little bit awkward i think to do this without whacking the wheel or one of the spokes um, so I'm going to pause at that point. So I've paused and I've just got a piece of scrap cardboard out of the packing and I'm just going to put that behind the hub pin so that I can hit the hub pin without hitting the wheel. So here goes. Uh, so if it started doing that, you're laughing, it's gone through. that hub pin is pretty much flush another little tap on there wouldn't go amiss there we go with the hub and now that's in lovely and tight uh, so that was step 10 uh, right so if you've got this far then um, you've probably done a difficult bit um, so uh, all good so far uh, what we're going to do now, step 11, is attach the conrod to the crank. There is a small black washery plasticky inner section of the bearing which needs to go on the end of the crank. There is a little, uh, what would you call it, slot there in the crank which you may not be able to see and that little black bearing needs to clip on click into that uh, that slot it is in my view very tight and you need to push it very firmly there we go once it's on it's on but getting it on the end of the crank and then you should hear it click in like that big smiles okay um, it then recommends a little bit of oil on that bearing uh, so if you've got some ashford oil that would be fine or oh, ashford aren't going to show it to me but sewing machine oil or something like that would be fine as well just a very fine oil don't use your duckums out of your car okay and then making sure that that is not twisted so that outside edge outside uh, bearing still facing the back that then just clicks on to that bit that we've just added so we should get another click Woohoo! there we are and it still runs nice and smooth lovely stuff all right step 12 we're going to put the flyer well we're going to put the flyer and the whole uh, flyer assembly together there are 12 of these little brass hooks they need to be screwed into the 12 pre-drilled holes in the flyer. Uh, I think you want to you go all the way in so you can't see any of the screw thread. 
and then the open end of the hook needs to point to the outside of the flyer. There we are, so all six are in, and all six of them have got the open side of the hooks facing to the outside. Uh, I should really have just put a little bit of wax, or Vaseline or whatever, on the end of those hooks before I put them in. Uh, so remember to do that. And that is step 12. Okay. Right, so this is step 12, sorry, this is step 13. We're gonna assemble the uh, the flyer unit, the mother of all, if you will. Um, so there are these two maiden uprights. You will see they are not the same. One of them has got a hole on the end and the other one hasn't. So looking at this, that is pivoted. The end has got the pivot bit at the bottom of it. The one with the hole goes in there. And the other one, <laughs> the risk of saying something redundant, goes in the other hole. So I'm just going to slap a bit of Vaseline on the ends of those. Just makes them move a bit more easy when you're taking the flyer on and off. That's clammy on my hand there. And that just goes in there. It is quite a tight fit but not ridiculously so. I'm not going to worry about my angle or anything at the moment. And then same again on the other side. A little cloth would be helpful. I'm using my trousers for this. And then that just slots in there. There we go. And then you should have an adjusting knob, which is a spherical piece of wood with a screw, a metal screw on the bottom. And that goes through the hole in the top. And there's a thread in there. That's just used for adjusting your tension, really, on the wheel. Okay, turn that until the end of it is just sticking out of the bottom like that. So I'm now, this is step 14, going to screw into the underside of that to hold the maiden upright on. You need the shorter of the two round headed screws and a penny washer and they, with a bit, of a, a bit of our friend, the Vaseline or the wax, from underneath, and screw in. You don't want to do these too tight, because then you won't be able to move them. They want to be I don't know, tight enough so they don't wobble, not too tight so they're impossible to move. So something like that, you can see that, that moves reasonably well there. Same on the other side. Screw and washer. I've done that one just a smidgen tight, because I've done it so tight I can't move it, so I'm just gonna Back it off a quarter turn. There we go. That's a bit too loose now. There we go. All right. Uh, there is then a highly technical piece which involves a drawing pin. Uh, and what we're trying to do is to put the drawing pin into the bottom hinge part so that if we use this adjusting knob, that metal screw presses against the top of the metal pin rather than embedding itself 
uh, in the wood. Uh, it doesn't give you any clever way of doing this. So what I'm going to do is just maybe put that, what, a quarter of an inch out and just press very gently. Actually, not that gently. Press, yeah, there we go. So I've just marked the wooden hinge at the bottom. I don't know whether you can see that. There's just a hint of a mark there. So that all that does is tell me then that I need to put my pin in the middle of that mark and then press it in. And hopefully it hasn't come out the other side. It hasn't. So that's all right. And you can see now that when I connect that, that adjusting knob is now resting on the pin. That's a very basic but quite functional technology, isn't it? That I like that. Uh, so that is step 14. So here we are, step 15 and 16. Uh, the instructions say you should put the flyer actually on the support at this point, on the flyer unit. I think that's just unnecessary, so I'm not going to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is with the hook. So it's the same hooks as I put in the flyer with an open end to it. I'm going to put that in the outside of the flyer unit. So it's at the little hole that's at the opposite end to the hinge. And I'm going to screw that in. I'm going to just put a bit of wax on that. And then you can adjust it later, obviously, but the open end of the hook should be downwards. And on the opposite side of that, there is another hole. And into that, I'm going to put the eye, the one without the opening. That's in um, the, I don't know how to say that, the eye should be facing the backwards, not upwards, if that makes sense. All right, at this point, I am going to put the flyer in. So just adjusting my maiden, my maidens as needed, and then that will just clip in. I, sp put, I should put, I should have put, the bobbin on first. So that should click in. I don't think it did actually click in there. That should fit in like that. There we go. And that should spin nice and smoothly. If it doesn't, then you probably just haven't got the two maidens aligned properly. That doesn't look quite right even there. So just make sure that that spins nice and true there. All right, so this is step 16 and 17. Uh, we're not going to bore you by uh, pictures of videos of me actually tying a knot or somebody else, to be honest, tying a knot. Um, so is what it should be like in the end. So I cut the piece of brake band pretty much in half. From one bit I've tied one end to one of these springs and that is now hooked through, hooked onto the hook on one side. It's going up over the bobbin, then through the eye and then the other end, if I turn that round, the other end of that is tied onto the, onto the other hook. And then the other piece of cord, I have tied one end onto the other end of the same hook. And its far end 
I'm threading through the little hole in the tension knob like that and then the tension knob then it's not that tight the tension knob sits in the hole and keeps the tension there you don't want the spring as tight as I had it originally it should be just extended so it doesn't want to be like that it wants to be like that um, having said all that once you get the whole thing assembled and you're spinning you'll then want to adjust it to suit uh, so that is step 16 uh, and 17 uh, at this point and at any point really it's probably a good idea just to have a little bit of oil uh, on the end of the flyer unit there there on the inside of the bobbin and there on the outside of the bobbin at least that's where I'd do it yeah that's where they do it as well um, so that is step 17 step 18 I'm not going to do radically because I, this surprised me what Ashford actually suggests is that you tie one end of the ribbon through this orifice hook and tie the other end of it round that now maybe everybody does this but I don't ever remember seeing a spinning wheel done like that uh, most cases people tie it in a loop and then hang it off the tension knob so do whatever you want on that I don't think anybody needs me to tell them how to tie a piece of a ribbon through a, a wire so uh, that is step 18 uh, we're going to move straight on to step 19 then right so if you're still watching this is step 19 and there's only really one to go if i said there was 21 at the front i lied because there's really only 20. Uh, what we're doing now is fitting this whole fly unit onto the main wheel and that is done by your two remaining screws and washers uh, and the screws go through those slots there and into the holes there at the top of the rails did you notice how i picked that up and nothing fell off there that's a good one doesn't like that so uh, a little bit of wax screw through the washer into the hole like many of the things on this wheel it doesn't want to be too tight to start off with so I do that so that I can still easily move the whole assembly backwards and forwards all right so there we go so as i said i've not tightened that too much so that i can move that backwards and forwards quite easily which will allow me to line up the wheel with the wheel on the fly um, i'm going to turn this so you can see down it but this is the way i think is the best way to do it so if you position yourself where the camera is then you can see whether the wheel is not aligned with whether the flyer rather is not aligned or is aligned with the wheel so I'm just going to move that across until that looks pretty aligned from me my cameraman is nodding reluctantly and then without moving the flyer I'm just going to tip that forward and then tighten up those same screws. You can't see those screws, I realise from here, but it's the same ones as in the previous step. So that's now nice and tight and hopefully when I tip that back up they still look aligned. I'm getting a nod, so that's good. Uh, so that is all but the last step. Alright, so step 20, the last step. 
Um, so what you want to do at this point is make sure that this adjusting knob is all the way screwed out so that this maiden bar is right flat down. Uh, and uh, that is the point at which you want to tie your drive band all the way around. If you have it right out here and then tie your drive band, if you then want to use any of the smaller wheels which will give you the faster ratios then the drive band will be too loose so that's why we're doing it that way having said all that uh, there is a bit of room for maneuver i think here um, so uh, the uh, the standard string like drive band is the one that comes with the ashford traditional um, and that wants to go I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to put it round that large whirl, not trying to get in the way of the camera. And then I'm going to thread it round the wheel. So that it's joining like that. Now, so far in this video, I've tried to be as clear as I possibly can and not to skate over any bits. Uh, at this point, because a knot is involved and I'm not going to do the knot on camera, I am going to skate over that bit. So it needs to be tied roughly like that. I'm going to stop filming now for a moment whilst I actually tie the knot. All right, so we're all done. Uh, I won't bore you with the shenanigans of knots. What you really want for this is a boy scout or maybe someone that uh, um, was a, a, I don't know, a, a sailor in the 19th century. Um, if you can't find either of those, then do the best knot you can, which is what we've done. It, it may be a clove hitch. Uh, if anybody would like to comment on the, in, the, in, the, in the comments as to what it is or what they recommend, then please do because knots are not my forte. Okay, you can see, however, that it is done uh, and we have a completed smooth running, how about that, uh, spinning wheel. Um, it's actually quite interesting to see a new one of these because this is the first one of these I've built although I've dismantled quite a lot and fiddled with them and put them back together again because they've been, um, they've been uh, in not very good condition. Uh, this is by far the most uh, true running wheel. Uh, because it's the latest one, it, it runs on ball bearings rather than the, uh, the older um, kind of plastic bearings and it does look, it does look much better. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful for everybody. Uh, we've enjoyed doing it mostly, apart from the knots. Um, if you've got any comments or suggestions or if you found it useful, then give us a comment below and we'll see you soon. Thanks very much.